I'm Alex McCord for RumorFix.com, broadcasting to you from the great city of Dallas, Texas, to discuss episode 13 of The Real Housewives of New York City, a.k.a. National Lampoon's St. Bart's Vacation. I'm even wearing a sweater that I bought in St. Bart's just for the occasion. First of all, let's talk about the airplane. Am I the only one that loves that landing? The four of us usually throw our hands up like we're on a roller coaster and scream, although I will say that we usually irritate the scared people sitting behind us. But it's eight minutes and it's fun. There's lots of exposition in this episode. We got a beautiful tour of the Oasis de Saline Villa from St. Bart's Properties. This was very important because that villa normally rents for $100,000 a week in high season, so in order to get any kind of discount whatsoever, they needed to show you what it is, where it is, where you can rent it for yourself. That done, we played Let's Torture the Chef. Um, Heather provided some comic relief by hitting a glass door. When I said last week slip on a banana peel, I didn't mean break your nose. <laughs> we also saw some drunk Sonia. I love me some drunk Sonia, but I will say this. She is a great mom. She's devoted to her daughter, but you never see that part of her life on camera because she doesn't have her daughter filmed. What you do see on camera is her left to her own devices and champagne flutes. It is fun to watch, I will say that, um, but once she started talking about the toaster oven again and again, I was with the other ladies who got up to make coffee. Enough with the toaster oven, leave that in the past. Carol showed us this episode that she is in on the joke. I appreciated her little one-liner about the Louds. For those of you who don't know, the Louds were the first family of reality TV back in the 70s on PBS. She showed she's a smart cookie. I appreciated that. Let's move on to the next day. Sonia planned a day for the ladies, starting off at Tom Beach, which she said was the hottest place on the island. Uh-uh, I don't know why she's saying that. It's an okay restaurant. It's good for lunch. This is where a lot of tourists go to pose, usually. Locals don't really go there, except for one thing. And this might be why Sonia picked it. Sometimes you'll get local guys hanging out at Tom Beach to pick up single female tourists. So maybe that was Sonia's motivation. The beach itself is way too windy and has screaming kids. You saw the wind. And why is it so windy? Because this beach is at the end of the airport runway. You have planes taking off and landing all day long. I'm surprised they got any footage at all because of the noise. One other thing about Tom Beach, they discussed banana rum. It's not banana rum, it's vanilla rum. And if you're going to go to St. Bart's, the best vanilla rum on the whole island is at Andy's Hideaway, which also has the best pizza. Tourist tip number 652. Let's move on to Latie St. Bart's. Sonia got this absolutely right. Latie is always a good time. Now, from the B-roll, you would think it's downtown. It is not. It's in the residential enclave of Point Milu. You need a map to get there, but once you get there, it is worth the trip. It's owned by a great lady named Carol. She has a company called Carol's Places. She owns a couple of nightclubs, a boutique. She does event planning. She is the queen of nightlife in St. Bart's. Wherever Carol is, is a good time to be had. And yes, at Latie, you do dance on the tables with no underwear. It's part of the St. Bart's experience. There is a stage, but the only people that use it are the dancers who work there. Let's move on to the meat of the episode now. Let's talk about Luann the Liar. Or is she? Dot, dot, dot. After five years on a reality show, she knows good and well how to have a private conversation if she needs to. She could have texted her friend Kat. She could have emailed her. Even if her friend Kat is on island time, she could call her up and say, Shelly, I just sent you an email. You need to check it. Her French was so slow on the phone. I think that's so that everyone would be um, easy with the subtitling personally. She didn't need to speak that slowly. If she really wanted to not be overheard, she could have gone in the bathroom, muffled her mic, turned on the shower, flushed the toilet. No one would ever have heard. She wanted to be overheard. Um, some interesting editing going on when they cut to the B-roll of uh, Heather and Ramona and Sonia all doing <gasps> while Luann was talking on the phone. There is no way in the world they would have overheard that conversation in real time, and half of them would not have even understood it. Um, I think that Luann is fishing for storyline here. I really do. Because certainly the baby storyline from earlier this season does not have legs and was even debunked by her mom in the press. Apparently she's had her tubes tied. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but usually you do trust mama. I think that perhaps Luann is finally embracing her tabloid reputation and making it work for her, taking a page from other reality show successes, and good for her. I think that she should go ahead and embrace it, and let's see what happens in the next episode. Oh, and by the way, there was no reason to bring Toma home to the villa, if in fact that's what she did. There are a hundred places on the island, especially if you are hooked up with Carol that night, where you could go. 
to be continued. I'm Alex McCord for RumorFix.com. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you next week.